we have some new items new gadgets that uh, just arrived and most of them are already posted on our website you can log in and check those items i want to quickly go over them we have this 22 in one screwdriver set i love this screwdriver set i'll tell you why the case to begin with is high quality and very durable the bits inside the screwdriver handle and also a tweezer are all secured in a way where you're not going to lose them they're not going to go loose and everything is secured inside this box so how do we open this box just click to open click to close the screwdriver set is made by the company best and honestly i love this set i love it we have 22 bits here and those bits every single one of those bits is useful you know how sometimes you buy a screwdriver set that has 50 bits or 60 bits or 100 bits and you later find out that only 10 of them are actually useful and the rest you never get to use those bits are extremely useful they work on everything from iphones ipads macbooks or maybe you want to remove a motherboard off a hard drive and all the stuff that we do on daily basis there are bits for you can log into our website to look at the diagram to see what bits are included but i can tell you from experience that those bits are very useful and you have 22 of them now you have the screwdriver handle here and this handle feels there's weight to it it feels a bit heavy and it has the dial on the top here so when you are screwing you can easily do it because there is this turning dial to remove a bit from the case and i love the way this is made to remove a bit all you have to do is press on the bit and take out so you press on it you press on it it pulls up and you remove it from the bottom so that's a bit you use it you're done with the bit take it out and put it back awesome look at this the bits are not gonna fall so everything remains nice and neat i want to remove this bit push on it take it out and then put it back in i love it i love the design and i love the fact that you will not lose the bits very easy to take the bits out very easy to put the bits back on the handle feels great and they've included a tweezer and honestly i did not check that tweezer yet i'm gonna check it with you right now and see what type of tweezer is included here if it's a cheap one or if it's a good one we have uh, three other tweezers on our website made by the company best and i went over them in a previous video and i told you about how high quality those tweezers are so I do not know if the one they included here is also high quality or if it's some cheap one that they included. I mean, this is a screwdriver set, so I do not really care about if the tweezer is good quality or not. But it's a nice addition. Let me take a look under the microscope to see how it looks. Wow, wow. That's one fine tweezer. Look at this. Look at the precision on this tweezer. Look at the precision of the tip wow i think this is one of the finest tweezer that i have in the shop here right now i'm using the mechanic tweezer which is an awesome tweezer but i think this one is even finer than the mechanic it is <laughs> or almost the same look at this <laughs> i think it's finer it's more pointier than the mechanic i love the mechanic tweezer i just love it but this one i'm honestly surprised that they included a tweezer like this look at the precision of the tip it does feel lightweight unlike the mechanic tweezer this is the mechanic tweezer that i'm currently using every day and this is the one that came with the screwdriver set now the mechanic tweezer is not to be long it's the longest tweezer that we have but it feels good in the hand and it has weight to it this one that came with the screwdriver set it feels very lightweight unlike the mechanic one it's very lightweight but very precise the tip on this tweezer is very precise so i would use this only for precision work like super precision work i do not know how durable this tweezer is but the way the tip aligns blew my mind i did not honestly think that this type of tweezer would be included in this set i love it i love it the next thing on the list is also an item by best and it's a wire stripper crimper cutter and this feels high quality this feels high quality there's good weight to it and when you push to close push to open very very smooth i do not know if i have a wire here that we can strip let me see 
I have a hard wire here, not a soft one. Maybe we can try to strip this wire. So this is the 22 in one screwdriver set. Let me put it on the side. And let's check out this stripper, wire stripper. And look at the quality on this. I do not know if you can tell on camera, but I love it. I love it. I love it. Let's put it to action. And I do not know the gauge of this wire, but we're going to just look at this. <laughs> wow. Very sharp. Very sharp. So let's strip it from here. Look at this. Very sharp. If you want to cut the wire, you can do it from here, like this. Or if you want to crimp, you can crimp from right here. Okay? Awesome tool. Awesome tool. I love it. I love the quality. I did take a close-up shot of the head here so you can read the numbers and see what gauge wires this wire stripper supports. You can check it out on our website. The next thing on the list is something that I have not tried yet. It was recommended to us by the factory and we told them that we're going to give it a shot. It's a grindstone for tweezers. A grindstone for tweezers and it looks something like like this heavy really heavy i mean it looks like i'm holding a plate of silver or or gold okay and i can feel the roughness of this stone now this stone has a line in the middle and it's meant to sharpen tweezers or to straighten tweezers i want to see how effective this is i have a couple of uh messed up tweezers here and maybe we can go over them and see how well this grindstone does I have a tweezer here and this one is by Exelta. Let's take a look at the tip and see what's going on. And as you can see, the tip is not good. I mean, I've abused this tweezer. Everything from solder mask to pinching stuff to grabbing stuff to twisting wires. Over the years, I've abused this tweezer like you've never seen before. Okay, and this is a good tweezer by Exelta. We're going to use this grindstone and see how well it does. I mean, right now, honestly, I have no idea how to use it, but I see a groove in the middle here. A groove right there in the middle. And maybe if we go like this. And do this side. I do not know if I'm supposed to do it one side at a time or if we should do both. I mean, all this grindstone does, it forces the tip inside this groove and it grinds it sends that tip i mean we are halfway there but now i can at least grab something with that tweezer okay we can possibly grind it like this and we are not focused it's hard to focus while moving and then maybe grind it like this and we'll see how it turns out I mean I can really feel the grinding on that tweezer I think I should not grind too hard because we're gonna end up losing part of the tip I mean I can make this tweezer as sharp as I want the more I grind the sharper the tweezer will be and look at that look at that the tweezer closes just perfect. Now I can make it thinner. If I want the tweezer to be narrower, we just grind some more and we can make it as narrow as we want. But right now this tweezer is useful again. Look at the way the tweezer closes. Just perfect. What I want to try is maybe we can grind it at an angle and let's see how that will come out. I mean, I'm just experimenting with this grindstone, but the possibilities are endless. So I'm doing it at an angle. I just want to experiment and see what we can do with this grindstone. So let's take a look under the microscope and see that angled grinding, what it did to the tweezer. And look at this. Look at this. Wow. We have a slightly bent tweezer now from the front. 
and I can use this for heavy duty work, for grabbing big stuff. So we took a tweezer that was not useful anymore and we made it useful again. I love it. I love it. I love it. It's small in size, but wow, very effective. You can use it not only to sharpen tweezers, but you can use it for any other purpose. Maybe you want to sharpen a prying tool that you have, or you want to sharpen a razor or whatever the case may be. And the next thing I want to go over is the ESD anti-static gloves. We got a large batch of those and I am honestly surprised by the quality of those gloves. They are lightweight, of course, but the way they feel when you wear them, they grab onto the skin and they are soft. The material is very soft, okay? We have those in medium and large. And this is an ESD safe anti-static glove and you can see the tip of the gloves. I do not know what material they use on the tip here, but uh, it's hard. And look at the way they fit. This is a large. We also have a medium size. And that's how the glove looks. Look at the way it wraps on the hand. Very nice. I love it. It's not loose. It's not uncomfortable. It just fits perfect on the hand. And if you want to take them out, very easy. And that's the material. Elastic, very nice. And I'm going to go over this very neat tool, a screw grabber. Press and you see four prongs, they appear from the top here. You can put the screw in, grab it. And especially useful if you want to put the screw in a very tight place where every time you try to put that screw in, it falls down. You can grab it with this, put it in, screw it a bit, and then use the screwdriver to screw the screw, to screw the screw all the way in. It looks something like this. And if you press, you see four claws appear from the top here. And you can use it to grab, let me see if I have a screw nearby here. Yeah, I have one right here. So let's say you put it in, screw it a bit, and then use the screwdriver to complete the job. I can also grab it maybe from the side here, like this, and then use the screwdriver to screw it from here. I mean, I can imagine this being very useful when working on older IMAX, like 2011 or 2010 IMAX, where when you remove the screen, you have to remove the screws from the sides. And anybody who's worked on those IMAX, you know that when you want to put the screw back, it's hard. So with the grabber, the job should be a piece of cake, a very useful tool and very cheap tool. So I do not see why everybody would not have one of those. Very cheap. And the last thing I want to go over is a power supply that is used to inject voltage onto a motherboard to detect a short. As you know, we already have two of those devices being sold on our website and we were out of stock at some point. Now we have the mechanic one back in stock, but the other one is still out of stock. Let me quickly show you what I mean. The blue one is the mechanic one and this one is battery operated. I love it. I love the fact that it's battery operated because that makes it portable and you can move it from one bench to another very easily without having to plug this to an outlet. And it's just an awesome tool. Now the mechanic short killer, you can switch between 1.2 volts, 1.8 volts, 3 volts and 3.8 volts. Straight to the point and it gets the job done and it's very portable because it's battery operated. We have the other power supply here, the voltage injection power supply and it's currently out of stock. It's an amazing tool, really awesome, but it's currently out of stock. Now we got yet another power supply that is used to inject voltage to detect a short. And this tool here, this voltage injection power supply is actually one of the first ones that were introduced in the market. I spoke with the maker and they said there's nothing else better in the market right now. And it's one of the most durable voltage injection tools in the market right now. Now the display is simple in the front. You have voltage and amperage. Let me plug this into our power bank so we can power it on. And that actually makes it portable because I do not have to plug this to a wall outlet. I can plug it to my power bank and I can move on anywhere in the shop, just like the mechanic short killer, which is, which has a built-in battery. And look at this, uh, it defaults at 1.6 volts. Of course we can go up in voltage or go down. It goes down as low as 0.2 volts and as high as 5.8 volts, which is more than enough to inject voltage to any board. You do not want to start high. 
you want to start injecting 1 volt, 1.2, 1.5 as needed. And amperage will show on the side here. Let me just check out the probes quick. We have the probe right here and it only fits one way. So twist until it goes in place, just like that. I mean, look at the quality of this device, not the power bank and this device. Look at the quality. You have an alligator clip here that you hook up to ground and then you have the rod probe to inject voltage onto the board. And awesome, amazing, and I love it. This will be posted on our website later today or tomorrow. Watch out for it. We have about 120 pieces right now, so we have enough. And that's it. These are the tools that I wanted to go over for now. You can check them out on northridgefix.com. Click on shop and you can see all the tools that we have for sale on our website. Here we have a Viper security remote control. I do not know what this controls. Maybe a car, maybe a security system but I know the brand Viper and I know that they make security systems. Customer mailed this in because it appears that he has a broken charging port connector. I have not made any videos on the Viper remote system, so I thought why not add this to the collection of videos that we already have on YouTube. Now, I took this surrounding plastic piece that goes around the key or the remote. I do not know why I call it a key. And I removed one screw from the back and that's how the remote comes apart. I see a battery here, a big battery. And right now we have the broken charging port attached on back of the remote right there, but I want to see where it goes on the board. The port goes right here, five pins. And I do not see any through hole pins or through hole on the board. Okay, so right now let's go ahead and prep the pads. Uh, we have somebody coming in, possibly the mailman. Hello, how are you doing? Let's take a look at the charging port to see how it looks like. So if you look here, the two pads on the side are gone. So we cannot use them to resolder this connector. And I do see that we have a broken pin on this connector. Okay, so the connector is gone. We cannot reuse this connector. We cannot reuse it, so we have to find one from our 500 charging port box. I've done a lot of videos on how to pick the right charging port using the 500 ports box, but let me go over it quickly. So if you look at this connector, we have two holes here. We have lips on the edges on all sides, bottom, top, left, right. And this is not a through hole component. And that's how it looks like. Now let's take a look at the pictures that we have for the 500 ports box and try to locate a similar connector. We need a surface mount component. Possibly this one, 13. It's a surface mount, it has the lips, it has two holes here. And we can maybe use 15 also, 13, 15. 13 looks like it has long pins and 15 is more like it. So I'm going to go ahead and grab port number 15. And it's a perfect fit. It's a perfect fit. Now what I want to do is remove the battery because we may have to apply hot air. We do not want to keep applying heat until the connector melts. As soon as you see solder liquefy, you pull hot air out and you let go. Look at that. Better than factory. We do not need to do anything else with those pins. 
they look very good but it doesn't hurt to test make sure everything is solid amazing amazing now what I want to check is if the connector is making a flush connection with the board we want to make sure those two solder blobs under the connector are squished and making a connection with the board look at this the charging port is flush with the board so the connector is not going anywhere and this is going to be a better than factory job and if there is any flux on the back we're going to also clean it and amazing we did an amazing job all we have to do is try and see if it works I do not see a reason why this would not work but we do not know if there was anything else wrong with this remote before it came here okay and let's go ahead and try it yes it's working look at this it's working but right now I don't have the battery connected the reason I don't have the battery connected is so we can see if voltage is reaching onto the board to turn this device on so that tells us that the charging port is working now we're gonna plug the battery power off on the power bank we're gonna plug the battery and then we're gonna see if the battery is taking a charge okay turn the power bank on uh-huh so it plays music when the battery is connected it plays music great I can just close the shop and sit and listen to this MIDI 8-bit sound it's charging at 0 0.2 amps awesome so the board goes inside like this inside the plastic we're gonna put a screw back on here and this one goes around and that's it the job is done before we end the video I want to do one more repair we have a customer that mailed in two Mercedes-Benz key fobs and he is having issues with the fobs I have a pair of key fob that are not opening the vehicle I tested and changed the batteries I do not see red light when pressing any button so I have one in front of me right now let's inspect the fob maybe we can figure it out quickly oh oh what is this look at this look at the way this component looks this is supposed to be a coil and we do see a deformation on that coil here a burn mark that could be what is causing the problem but let's continue with the inspection I never had to change that coil that specific coil on this model fob before And there's nothing on back of the board so it's just this coil now I have a lot of donor fobs here we're gonna grab a donor board and I have two that look similar here uh, we can use either one and that's what I keep my salvaged broken donor boards so we can get parts from and let's take a look and see if we have that component on this donor board and this coil on the donor board does not look good either hmm. that's the customer's coil here and that's this one I do not really like the shape of that coil on this donor board. Yeah, that's more like it. Right there. So let's go ahead and change that coil. And we'll test to see if the fob is functioning after that coil replacement. Let's remove this component. This, what looks like a damaged coil. broke right off the coil broke right off 
and we're gonna extract that coil from this donor board here. That's just put it on the side. We're gonna prep the pads. We have a weak pad. You see that weak pad? We have a weak pad, but the good thing is the pad is still making a connection. But we'll have to test after we solder this back on. Maybe we can run a jumper wire from here onto here, just to ensure that this pad is making a good connection. And why don't we do that right now before we solder the component? We did not have plugs, so the joint did not come out very nice, but that's okay. We're gonna fix it All right, so let's go ahead and solder that coil We're gonna grab it from right over here and Okay, and we should be good the coil is soldered on properly and the left pad is making a connection with the capacitor because it was broken off or slightly broken off from here so now it's making a good connection and all we have to do is test after we take the mail from the mailman so let's close this fob we're gonna put that tiny chip inside here this one goes on top motherboard goes here and the coil that we changed is right over here let's close it and now when we press any one of the buttons on this fob if the fob is working properly it should output 314 or 315 so let's see price awesome 314.2 button number two 314.9 and finally button number three 314.7 so the fob is fully functional and we did a very good job i hope you enjoyed the video don't forget to like and subscribe leave a comment if you have any questions and we'll do something else in the next video